and welcome to our little quiz um, on this lovely Wednesday. Today is hump day. It is Wednesday, just to confirm that to everybody who has lost all track of days. Um, if you're not watching this though on the day that it goes out, it might not be Wednesday, so do just consult with your calendar. Um, yes, absolutely. So we are the Quizzer Sisters. I am Jane and this is my lovely sister, Lucy, hello, good evening everyone, happy Wednesday. Yes, and happy Easter to everybody over the weekend, hope you had a good one, um, albeit a bit of an odd one. Now I'm going to run through the rules quickly, um, okay. there's not a lot of them, we've kept them as simple as we can. Um, and so, uh, here we go, so house rules, we have 40 questions coming up, um, those are four rounds of 10 questions, each question is worth one point. Um, one of the rounds is a picture round um, and it's meant to be a bit of fun, so I hope you enjoy that. All the questions are in English. Um, we've emboldened a few bits to help anybody um, if English isn't your first language. Uh, no cheating, please. There's absolutely nothing at all to gain from cheating. Um, and if you really have to cheat, please don't put your scores in. That's fine, keep it to yourself. Um, and finally, we will be available on Facebook and Twitter afterwards um, and so please do come and chat to us we'd love to hear from you and please don't post the answers um, people will be playing this later so Luce did you have a nice Easter a very nice Easter yes we did had um, we had 48 Cadbury's cream eggs delivered other eggs are available Lovely. Um, and 48 bottles of beer so uh, we had a, an interesting Easter I was thinking of not sending you an egg this year, but a, a case of insulin to help you with eating all of those eggs, <laughs> keep you out of that coma. <laughs> did, you, did you get your orange smarties? I did, yes, yes. They might not have survived as long as Easter. Have to say. <laughs> they did they actually make it all the way through to Easter. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah they, they may not have lasted quite that long. <laughs> but were fabulous nonetheless. Thank you. I hope you all I hope you all had good Easter. The Easter Bunny managed to find you wherever you may be. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. At least the weather was nice. We got to go outside. So that's a very British thing to talk about, isn't it? And we've been told off for waffling loose. So yeah. I know. Waffle, yeah. waffle people talking about scintillating conversation. Have we, have we had any compliments on the jackets? No, I don't think we have. Well, and I think people should should be aware that we have, we have jackets. I now have a, a second one of these that Lucy sent me. Um, who knew there was more than one type of sparkly gold jacket? But there we are, and I'm roasting in it. It's absolutely sweltering. <laughs> don't, don't tell don't tell her that there's a third one coming. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> okay, right. Let's stop waffling, or we'll get more emails. <laughs> let's get on with the questions. All right. Yeah. And question one, if you walk on Main Street USA in Florida, California, Tokyo, Paris, Hong Kong or Shanghai, which theme park are you in? Do you know this one, Luce? Which theme park would you be in? I do. I've been to the California one. Oh, yeah, me too. I think I've been to the Paris one and the Florida one as well. Woohoo! And I get me. <laughs> and question number two. Arabica and Robusta are two main types of bean used to make which drink? So Arabica and Robusta make which drink? You two for two, Luce? Yes, ma'am, I am. I thought you might be. Okay, let's go on to number three. What colour is the highest value ball in snooker and also the colour of the eight ball in traditional eight ball pool? That's quite hard to say, eight ball pool. Eight, eight ball pool. Mm. <laughs> Try it after you've had a few pints, it gets harder. <laughs> I'm great at pool. After three pints, I'm brilliant at pool. Oh, you're quite good anyway at that sort of thing, aren't you? I don't. I have no coordination. Rubbish at anything like that. Okay, number four. Down the rabbit hole, a mad tea party, and the Queen's croquet ground are three of the chapter titles 
from which classic novel of 1865? Still got a full house? Yes, ma'am. Woohoo. I mean, I know I've seen the answers, but <laughs> I've also, on my own merit, got four from four. I've written the questions and seen the answers. It's still no guarantee I'll get them right. <laughs> <laughs> Moving swiftly on to number five. Gargamel and Azrael are often thwarted by which race of little blue cartoon creatures? Fantastic fancy dress, this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Apparently, they're eight apples, no, three apples high, each of these little creatures. Oh. It's about like me. <laughs> Better than apples. <laughs> okay, let's move on to number six. In Western astrology, which sign of the zodiac is the water bearer? One for me, one for me. <laughs> <laughs> and number seven the cape of good hope is located near the southern tip of which continent so the cape of good hope is located near the southern tip of which continent looks nice there doesn't it? it really does doesn't it look at that beach And number eight, Archwell is the name of the soon-to-be-launched charitable foundation by which couple? So Archwell is being launched by which couple? They've had some horrendous cyber squatting, have you seen? <laughs> um, go direct to gold digger. <laughs> Brutal. Yeah. Brutal. Okay, number nine. Which horror author's first published novel was a 1974 novel about a girl called Carrie who had telekinetic powers? So which horror author's first published novel was that? It was actually his fourth novel, but it was the first one he'd had published. Mm -hmm. Sissy Spacek in the film. Still, you remind me of her. I remind you of her? Yeah. How come? I don't know, it's just it's like a fly in the air and throw things at people without actually touching them. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Question 10. Which is the only letter of the English alphabet that doesn't appear in the name of any of the 50 states of the USA? Mm. So the only letter of the English alphabet that doesn't appear in the names of any of the 50 states of the USA. Do you know that one? Yep. Very good. It's going to make an educated guess up as well, I reckon. Yeah, you can probably narrow it down and then try and think mm. of any states there. Yeah. Okay, round one, recap. If you walk on Main Street USA in Florida, California, Tokyo, Paris, Hong Kong, or Shanghai, which theme park are you in? Number two, Arabica and Robusta are two main types of bean used to make which drink? Number three, what color is the highest value ball in snooker and also the color of the eight ball in traditional eight ball pool? Number four, down the rabbit hole, a mad tea party in the Queen's Croquet Ground are three chapter titles from which classic 1865 novel? Gargamel and Azrael are often thwarted by which race of little blue cartoon creatures? Number six, in Western astrology, which sign of the zodiac is the water bearer? Number seven, the Cape of Good Hope is located near the southern tip of which continent? Number eight, Archwell is the name of the soon-to-be-launched charitable foundation by which couple? Number nine, which horror author's first published novel was a 1974 novel about a girl called Carrie who has telekinetic powers? 
number 10, which is the only letter of the English alphabet that doesn't appear in the name of any of the 50 states of the USA. So how are you doing, do you think, Luce? Uh, yeah, I think I, I think I got the perfect 10 for this. Did you? Very yeah. good. Just bragging now. Only because <laughs> you can tell whether or not you did. <laughs> yeah, no, I did pretty, pretty well that round. Very, very good. Well, shall we go on to the answers then? Okay, you all ready for the answers? Yeah. Okay, let's get going. Number one, Disneyland is what we're looking for there, Main Street USA. So as long as you've got Disney, you can have Disneyland, Disney World, Disney Resort, whatever, that's fine, as long as you've got Disney in there. And number two, coffee, those beans make coffee. Fueling the world at the moment, coffee, I imagine. Absolutely. And the colour of the ball we were looking for is black. Number four, those chapter titles are from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. So we'll accept Alice in Wonderland as well for that one. And number five, those little blue creatures are the Smurfs. Okay, now for number six. Okay, that sign of the Aquarius is, uh, sign of the Zodiac is Aquarius. The best sign to have been born under, obviously, definitely don't want to be born under Leo. All I'm saying is, it's all I'm saying. Yeah, we're the king of the jungle, man. <laughs> what are you? You're yeah, water. we carry water. No water, no nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number seven is Africa. Cape of Good Hope is Africa. And number eight, uh, those uh, two people are Harry and Meghan. You can have the Duke and Duchess of Sussex or the Sussexes as long as you've got Not HRH anymore. Yep, no HRH in going on there. No. Uh, the horror author, that's Stephen King. And finally for the round, number 10 is the letter Q. There are no states with the letter Q in them. So there you go. How did you do? Tot up your scores. Hang on to them because I will tell you later how to put your scores into our score entry system to see how you did against the rest of the world. If, if whilst you're here, if you haven't already hit subscribe, then do so and you can find out all sorts of quizzes and stuff that's going on as well. Indeed. Okay, round two, question one. Blue Ribbon Sports was the original name of which major US sportswear corporation that is known for its tick-shaped swoosh logo? I broke another pair of my trainers this week. Did you? Oops. They're not this particular they brand. brand though. No, I saw the not photos. Brand. Brand. No. Okay, question two. China and which other country are the only two in the world with populations above one billion people? That is one huge number, isn't it? So China and which other country are the only two countries in the world that have more than one billion people living there? There's a lot of people. Hell of a lot. Uh, number three, the war poem in Flanders Fields by John McRae is widely credited with which flower being adopted as a symbol of remembrance? So we're looking for a flower here. Number four, the iconic former footballer Edson Arantes de, oh no, here we go, <laughs> Nascimento. Edson Arantes de Nascimento is best known by, much easier to pronounce, one word name. What is that one word name, please? Do you think the one word name came about because of the length of the actual given name? Because they knew that one day I would be reading it out on yeah. a question and would need a very much shorter name. Yeah, I'm sure. That's exactly why yeah. they've done it. It's good of them. It's good of them. Very kind. 
Okay, number five, which playwright is credited with inventing and introducing over 1,700 words into the English language, including hurry, gossip and bedroom? So which playwright might that be? Yeah, inventing and introducing, that's a lot, isn't it? That's... Yeah, he had a lot of fun with language. So he did things like he turned nouns into verbs and things like that. Mm -hmm. Elbow was, uh, it existed as a noun, but he turned it into a verb. So you would elbow somebody out. <laughs> yeah, so it's, he had a lot of fun with language. So it's a he then? Yes. <laughs> They weren't, a, yeah, yeah, definitely a he. Okay, number six. In 2006, which company bought YouTube? Our hosts. Hello, YouTube. Woohoo. <laughs> Okay, number seven. Moonwalker was a 1988 movie starring and featuring the music of which US superstar? Who could that be? Okay, number eight. Cointreau is flavoured with which fruit. So the drink Cointreau is flavoured with which fruit? don't like it on its own but as part of a B52 shot it is chummy. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Yeah. <laughs> okay number nine. In the novels by Edgar Rice Burroughs John Clayton II, Viscount Greystoke, was raised by apes and is best known by which one word name? See, people much prefer one word names. <laughs> <laughs> Quiz masters and people have to, sports commentators generally yeah. prefer one word. Yeah, absolutely. So Jane, Lucy, Sean. Easy. Easy. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, last question of the round. Mexico, Argentina and the Philippines are among the countries to use an official currency with which four-letter name? See, another, there's a whole theme to this round, four-letter name. Like the Trump question we had a little while back. That was a... <laughs> His the Twitter handle name. Yeah. Yes, which four-letter word precedes Donald Trump? <laughs> what could that be? <laughs> okay, let's do a quick recap then. Question one, Blue Ribbon Sports was original name of which major US sportswear corporation that is known for its tick-shaped swoosh logo? Number two, China and which other country are the only two in the world with populations above one million, one million <coughs> people? Number three, the war poem in Flanders Fields is widely credited with which flower being adopted as a symbol of remembrance? Number four, the iconic former footballer Edson Arantes do Nascimento yes, is best known by which one word name? Which playwright, number five, is credited with inventing and introducing over 1,700 words into the English language? That is a lot of words. Number six, in 2006, which company bought YouTube? Number seven, Moonwalker was a 1988 movie starring and featuring music of which US superstar? Number eight, Quantro is flavoured with which fruit? Number nine, in the novels by Edgar Rice Burroughs, how is John Clayton II, Viscount Greystoke, better known? One word name for that. And number 10, Mexico, Argentina and the Philippines are among the countries to use an official currency with which four-letter name? Marvellous. Still think you've got a full house? I do, yeah. 
I'm, I'm on fire. En fuego to uh, practice my Spanish. Very good. Okay, let's get on with those answers then. Okay, so number one, that's Nike with the swoosh logo. Mm -hmm. And number two, that is India. So China and India are the only two countries with more than a billion people. Number three, um, the flower of remembrance is the red poppy. As long as you've got poppy there, that's fine. And number four, that's Pele. Much easier to say Pele. <laughs> number five, um, William Shakespeare invented or introduced those words into the English language. And number six, Google or um, YouTube. Number seven, Michael Jackson. Um, we do the we do the moonwalk dance in the well, chair. Yeah, it actually it looks more Dalek. That's the level of my dance. Points for effort. The level of my dance skills right there. <laughs> Very good. Number eight, Cointreau is flavoured with orange, orange peel. And number nine, um, Me Jane, you Tarzan. Oh, Oi! See what, see what I did there? Does that, that make me Tarzan? <laughs> And number 10, the final one, that's the peso. The peso. So top your scores up again. See if you're keeping pace with Lucy. Um, keep holding your scores, though, and I will tell you at the very end how to put them into our results entry system so you can see how you did against the rest of the world. Okay. Shall we crack on with round three? What do you think, Lucy? I have to say the pitch round is quite often my favourite round, just for comedy value. Yeah, these these are pretty good. So these some of these have been in the news recently. These are families recreating scenes from famous films. So let's have a look. They're quite they're very well done actually. Some of them. So how many of these do you recognise? We should have done one. We should still do one. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we should do on a, do an, a bonus picture on Facebook and Twitter after this. Can you tell what we're supposed to be? Yeah. <laughs> they are very good, though. Some of them. It, it's like two or three different families doing them all, so you'll see a lot of the same faces in there. Um, but they've put some serious effort into some of these. Mm. Yeah, it's very good. Very good. In our little YouTube description, we've put links to the places we found these so that you can go and see all the other ones they've done because they're very, very clever. They're uh, well worth visiting. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the next slide. See, uh, see what you think about these ones. <laughs> that number nine is genius. Actually, no, I think number 10 might be my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> it's very, very good. I, I do like number seven. Mum mm. would have even mum would have got number six yes a favorite film yeah no that's nice nice straightforward one i think yeah but even the detail you know her top's right yeah no i know they put loads of effort into these loads of effort so i'm going to move back to the uh, the last lot so you can have another little look at those um and then i'll give you a second chance at the second slide as well but it is very good number one you might get by looking at the detail in the background if you don't know what it is by looking at the front mm. and number two mom cries at that every time doesn't she yeah this film every single time how many times has she seen it don't know but she always cry <laughs> yeah and number five that's um, my son's favorite film yeah <laughs> Okay, I'm going to move back onto slide number two and give you another, I don't know, 30 seconds or so to have a look at those. Number seven, still your favourite film? It is still my favourite film, yes, yes. Yeah, I love it, it still scares me. <laughs> so mum cries at the other one. I'm still scared watching this one. <laughs> Pathetic really, aren't we? <laughs> Okay, shall we go and see what all of those are really meant to be? Yeah. 
let's go and have a look. So slide number one, that very first picture there is, going to come up? Yes, there we are. It's Indiana Jones. It's the first one. It's the Temple of Doom, I think, the first one. I wondered if that was Harry Potter to start with. Yeah. And when you look at the detail, you can see it's meant to be Mr. Jones. Yeah. The next one, the one that our mum cries at, that's E.T. or E.T. the Extraterrestrial, if you've given it its full title. And uh, number three, that is the Adams Family. Number four, um, that one is uh, Castaway um, with Wilson there. The, the Great film. film. Yeah, the, the ball. So, yeah, it's a really good film. Um, and then number five, well, that little boy's pretending to be Kevin McAllister. That is Home Alone. So they are really good, aren't they? I thought that uh, yeah. put a load of effort into those. Uh, the next one, number six, I carried a wall down. Very good. That is Dirty Dancing, yes. <laughs> and then number seven, my favourite film is Jaws. Yeah. Um, and then number eight, uh, that is Braveheart. <laughs> Look at the makeup they've done. It's yeah. Very good. The next one, though, I love this bee that they've they've put together. Um, yeah, very clever. Honey, I shrunk the kids, <laughs> and this little boy is the yeah. father. <laughs> Excellent. Again, so tot up your scores um, and keep them to the end, and I will tell you how to put them into our results system. Okay, now for round four, which is back to ordinary sort of Q&A questions. Final, final round, folks. Final round. Okay, question number one. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore, is a line from which classic 1939 film? I've got the wrong colour shoes for these. Okay. Yeah, you need to have different colours. The, ne the next thing that I'll be sending mm. you. <laughs> oh no, yeah, what, what am I saying? Keep quiet, keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I have plenty of shoes <laughs> and shiny jackets. <laughs> Number two, which god in Norse mythology famously owns a hammer called Mjolnir? So which god in Norse mythology famously owns a hammer called Mjolnir. I wonder how many people will know this because of the Norse mythology and how many will know it from popular films. From a film. Well, that version of the hammer is from the popular films. If you mm. know it from Norse mythology, the hammer, it has a very much shorter handle on it. Mm. So there you go. More things you didn't care about. <laughs> Number three, what is the last name shared by these celebrity children? You have Brooklyn, Romeo, Cruz, and Harper Seven here. So what is their last name? What a handsome family, eh? Yeah. Well, they come from good stock, don't they? Yeah, they do. Okay, number four. The Dolphins and the Heat are teams that are both based in which Florida city? So the Dolphins and the Heat are teams based in which Florida city? Okay, number five. In various versions of the fairy tale, which princess has been known as Talia, Briar Rose, and Rosamond, but she is probably better known as Aurora? Know this one? Hmm. Which of the names do you know? I'm sure it from, from, from Aurora, I think, was the. Okay, I'd have got it from Briar Rose or Aurora. Mm. Okay, number six. Which chess piece can only move diagonally? So when you're playing a chess match, which piece can only move diagonally? Number seven, starring in their first cartoon, 
Puss Gets the Boot, 1940, which cat and mouse were originally called Jasper and Jinx. They actually got the names that you'll know them by as part of a competition, and the winner won $50. Ooh, yeah, it's quite cool, isn't it? Should have asked for shares rather than money. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Mind you, 50 bucks maybe in 1940 was probably worth having. Yeah. Okay, number eight. Which famous jeweled items were made by a Russian jeweler between 1885 and 1917 for Tsars Alexander III and Nicholas II as Easter gifts for their wives and mothers? Timely question with Easter. Topical. We don't just throw these together, you know. <laughs> thought goes into this. Absolutely. And when I first read this question, I was thinking, I wonder how many wives and mothers they had then. <laughs> <laughs> I know 60 were produced for them. <laughs> Presumably, they all got given more than one. <laughs> okay. And question number nine. Angels on horseback mm -hmm. is a dish typically made by wrapping bacon around mm -hmm. shellfish. Oh, roll on, going back to restaurants and having angels on horsebacks. Not shellfish. But, but, mm. <laughs> I went to a shellfish restaurant once with our dad uh, in France, and as I looked down, I could see the shells all opening and closing. I remember saying, Dad, your dinner's still alive. <laughs> oh, grim, grim. Yeah. <laughs> Hideous. Okay, last question. Last question of the quiz. Oh. Assistance of Memory is a painting by which Spanish artist? All those melting clocks. So has your memory been persistent this evening? Have you managed to answer all these questions correctly? So the Persistence of Memory is a painting by which Spanish artist? Okay, recapping. Number one, Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore, is a line from which classic 1939 film? Number two, which god in Norse mythology famously owns a hammer called Mjolnir? Number three, what is the last name shared by Brooklyn, Romeo, Cruz and Harper Seven? Number four, the dolphins and the heat are teens in which Florida city? Number five, in various versions of the fairy tale, which princess has been known as Talia, Briar Rose and Rosamond, but she's probably better known as Aurora? And number six, which chess piece can only move diagonally? Number seven, starring in their first cartoon, Puss Gets the Boot, which cat and mouse were originally called Jasper and Jinx? Number eight, what famous pieces of jewellery, so items of jewellery, were made by a Russian jeweller between 1885 and 1917 for the Tsars Alexander III and Nicholas II as Easter gifts for their wives? So what jewelled items? And number nine, angels on horseback is a dish made by wrapping bacon around what shellfish? And number 10, The Persistence of Memory is a painting by which Spanish artist? So I'll give you a few seconds there to get your answers together and then we'll go through them. So you still on Full House, Lucy? I, I am on Full House. It's oh. been my, my, my best yet. Very, very good. Okay, so those answers are, let's get uh, the answer screen up. Well, now I find out if I'm right, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very <laughs> confident. But, but although you have seen the answers already, you probably yeah. have yeah, that's trouble here. <laughs> so number one, uh, that quote was from the Wizard of Oz. I'll give you the wonderful Wizard of Oz as well if you've got that. Um, although the film was just called Wizard of Oz. Uh, number two, Mjolnir is the hammer of Thor. Number three, those celebrity children are the Beckhams. So just need Beckham there. 
And number four, those teams are all based in Miami. And number five, that princess is Sleeping Beauty. Okay, on to number six. Uh, the piece that can only move diagonally in chess, that's the bishop. And number seven, Tom and Jerry were known um, as Jasper and Jinx. Jerry wasn't actually mentioned, he didn't have a name in it, but the working title for him was, uh, was Jinx. So there you go. And number eight, um, those were Fabergé eggs. So lucky ladies getting those. Um, and then number nine, oysters are wrapped in bacon to make angels on horseback. And then number 10, the last one, that's Salvador Dali. Or you can give him his full name, which I'm not even going to do. Oh, boo, boo, try, try. Or, look, he was even a Marquis. So there you go. So you can have any of those as long as you've got Dali in there. That is, uh, that's fine by us. Okay, so that is the end of our little quiz. We hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and I shall tell you in a second how uh, to put your scores into the system. But thank you very much to Lucy and to Jules behind the scenes who you can't see. Um, we will be back on Friday. Well, actually, Sean is going to take over on uh, Friday and show us how to do it properly. So please tune in for that. That's eight o'clock UK time um, on Friday. To put your scores in, register at quest.quizzing.com and go and see how you do against the rest of the world. And please hit subscribe. And after I stop talking, it will move on to a screen that will just give you an explanation of how to put your scores in. So head to quest.quizzing.com for that. Um, and we look forward to speaking to some of you um, on Facebook and Twitter now. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. See you Bye next time. Bye, Bye all. Have a good rest of the week.